If this is how you normally make radius corners, tracing a paint can on each corner, cutting them roughly to size, and then sanding them all down, hoping they'll all be close enough to the same size and uniformity, there might be a better way to do it. Using a router, there are two other ways that you can get perfect, consistent radiuses and chamfers on all your corners on all your projects. One way is to use templates with a template bit. Templates can be bought pre-made, but it's easy enough just to make your own. Making your own means you can have whatever size radius or chamfer you want. So if that paint can really is just the right size, so be it. I like to make templates out of pieces of MDF or inexpensive engineered hardwood flooring. You'll still have to trace, cut, and sand until it's just right, but you will only have to do it once, and the work you put into it this one time will pay big dividends. Sometimes you can even use things around the shop to use as a template to make the new template, simply by using a flush trim bit. Adding tabs to the edges lets you position the template on each corner with consistent results, and if you shape another profile on the opposite corner, you'll have one template with two profiles, which means less templates to store. Now, since most of the time I'm making smaller radiuses and chamfers, I like this second option. Secure a piece of sacrificial material to the bottom of the workpiece, flush with both sides. Then, using a radius or chamfer profile bit, just route the corner like you would any other edge, but route top to bottom instead of from left to right. The sacrificial piece will help prevent tear out when the bit exits the material. Now, unfortunately, sanding is usually where things go wrong at this point, so don't ruin your crisp new edges with a random orbital sander. Most random orbital sanders have soft pads which will roll over the top and bottom edges and round them off. But if you're looking for the cleanest possible corners and edges, opt for hand sanding with something more rigid. I like to use this little sanding block that uses the same five inch hook and loop disc that my orbital sander uses. It's rigid enough for work like this and it makes it easy to go through the grits if necessary. So there you go, two alternatives to the trace sand hope technique. That's all I got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching as always. We'll see you guys in the next video.